Hello students, welcome to Legacy IS Academy. Today we are going to discuss about the SRI method of paddy sewing or rice sewing and what are the advantages and disadvantages of this method, why this method is making the headlines and also about the, uh, the brief background about this particular method we are going to discuss. So first of all the context in which we are discussing today's issue is because recently the state government of Punjab has started to promote this SRI technique of paddy cultivation which is a technique used in the sewing phase of paddy. The main advantage this SRI system offers as compared to the conventional method of agriculture uh, rice cultivation is that it saves much more water as well as labor cost and thus farmers can have one more option of rice sowing in a year that means instead of sowing two crops or uh, two crops in a year or one crop in a year farmers can sow two or three crops in a particular year if they move uh, move to the SRI method of rice cultivation and also if you look at the importance of rice cultivation to Punjab we can see the Punjab is one of the highest producer of rice in India and its growth has the cultivation of rice in the area has continuously uh, decreased but if you look at the production in the lakh tons of a number it has continuously increased for example if you compare the figure between 2016 to 2020 the area under paddy cultivation has shrunk from 24.25.44 lakh hectare to just 21.29 lakh hectares however at the same time the amount of rice produced has increased from 1768 almost to 210-215 lakh tons uh, that is why any such method of rice cultivation which can save groundwater in Punjab must be researched and promoted in the state the reason is also because Punjab is continuously having a problem of over exploitation and that has caused significant decline in the level of groundwater in the state. Also experts believe that this method is not only beneficial from the point of view of saving of water but also beneficial for the soil environment as well as farmers. So let us try to understand what is the system of rice intensification and how it has developed. So first time the system was used in the island of Madagascar which is just off the coast of African continent in the 1980s. However, once it became successful, it got popular and was adopted by many countries and even today many countries especially in the South and Southeast Asia are using this method for cultivation of rice. Even in India, several states for example Telangana and Andhra Pradesh are using this method for cultivation of rice. The main advantage I will discuss that oh, definitely it saves the groundwater and if you look at the actual experiments that has been done in several parts of India, for example in some district of Gujarat, some district of, Rajas, uh, some district of Punjab and some district of Telangana, we find that around 15 to 20 percent of groundwater is saved and at the same time the productivity of rice also increases through the SRI method. Not only this, the cultivation method also leads to substantial reduction in the investment on external inputs which is very very beneficial for the small and marginal farmers who are having a very large number in India. If you look at the data given by the research, we find that the SRI system uses almost 25% less urea fertilizer as compared to conventional farming. At the same time, it uses almost 15 to 20% of less groundwater as we have seen and also it matures 10 to 15 days before the conventional method of rice farming. So that is why these advantages can be very beneficial for the small and marginal farmers as it is expected that per acre their yield will increase by 20,000 to 30,000 which is a very significant sum. So how does this particular system of cultivation work? So this we can understand by breaking the whole process into three different stages. The first stage of SRI system is regarding the preparation of field. The first method is the first stage is preparation of field where the field is prepared by undertaking plowing where the soil and the uh, upper layer and the uh, lower layer of soils are continuously mixed with each other and soil also becomes much more softer and then after the plowing it is followed by laser leveling. Laser leveling is a method of soil leveling where the laser is used to ensure that everywhere we have a kind of uniformity in the level of soil and that uniformity is maintained up to plus minus 2 millimeter. Once the soil has been prepared then in the second stage it is the process of irrigation. 
However, the advantage here accrues in the SRA method that the irrigation or the water requirement for irrigation is much less, much lesser as compared to the traditional method where the full field is required to be flooded uh, at least till 35 to 40 days after the plant transplantation. And due to low water requirement, it also has a much higher, a much better efficiency as far as the production is concerned. Then the third stage is transplantation. In the transplantation stage, almost 10 to 12 days old nursery. Nursery are basically uh, uh, these paddy plants which are still having soil attached along with their roots. So these 10 to 12 days old nursery plants are then transplanted to the actual field where the sowing has to be has sowing has to be done. The effort or it has to be ensured that when the transplantation is being done the roots are also being transplanted along with the paddies and they must be transplanted at a certain distance from each other basically this is somewhere about 10 inches and this has to be ensured by a device that is called as rope meter this is this has a certain added advantage that we'll discuss in the coming slide so these are the three stages of sri system so obviously question comes that why do we are why are we focusing on a spacing as we can see from this picture here in the sri system so the main advantage of a spacing is that the a spacing provides a very favorable environment for the growth and development of rice plants because they have sufficient uh, su uh, sufficient space enough space so that they can absorb all the different different kinds of moisture oxygen water and can grow in a abundance then second however one thing we have to keep in mind here is that the seedling or nurseries that we are transplanting should be located very closer to the main field so that the time lag between uprooting and planting can be avoided the problem the main reason is that because if the time lag is higher it should be somewhere between 30 to 40 minutes but if the time lag is higher than that then what happens the roots started to become dry and then the uh, plant if it is transplanted will not grow and will not give sufficient yield. So that is why it should be ensured that not more than 30 to 40 minutes time passes be between uprooting and then uh, retransplanting. Re the question comes that whether SRI system can be used or this system can be used for transplantation of pad in all kind of soil or do we have a specific kind of soil requirement. So the answer is that as compared to conventional method of rice cultivation, the SRI system can be used in all types of soil even including in such soils which are less fertile in nature because obviously the water requirement is less and the requirement of chemical fertilizers is much lesser in this kind of plantation. Second is in such soils the number of seedlings can increase to double and the third point is that if we try to compare the growth of SRA system cultivated rice and traditional system cultivated rice what we have observed that under SRA system only 2 kilograms of seed is required to grow a nursery for 1 acre. While at the same time, if you look at the conventional or traditional method, almost 5 kg of seed is required if you want to prepare nursery for 1 acre of land. So that is why we have discussed initially also that by using this kind of cultivation method, the input cost can be drastically reduced which will be boon for the small and marginal farmers in India. Now what about water requirements? So as we discussed the SRA system uses 15 to 20 percent less water. The reason is very simple because in conventional method of farming we have to continuously flood the fields. How continuously flood the field because first you can we have to flood the field before transplantation then after 35 to 40 days of transplantation you have to continuously keep the field flooded and again after that every week you have to fill the field so that the rice will have sufficient amount of water for themselves. But in the SRI system irrigation is required only at intermittent base intermittent basis. The reason is simple because in this method we are trying to maintain a balance between the soil moisture requirement as well as the oxygen requirement of the crop because the problem is that if we over flood or we flood the field completely the roots of the uh, rice will not have sufficient power to absorb the oxygen it, is not, it will not have sufficient availability of oxygen and that will stifle the plant and this has been the experiment has been done in the Gurdaspur district of Punjab itself where a very famous Baspati variety of rice Pusa 1121 was cultivated and what we have found that instead of using 62 lakh liters of groundwater which is generally used for the conventional traditional method of rice farming the SRA system will use 50 lakh liters so it is a very good saving especially in the water stressed areas of Punjab, uh, Punjab state 
so why especially this system is more important for punjab because initially as we have discussed punjab is the leading producer of rice in india and not only that the problem here is that due to continuous over exploitation of ground water in punjab especially since the time of green revolution in 1960s and 1970s due to this cheap supply of electricity subsidized electricity the over exploitation of ground water has caused severe shortage and this we can see from this given diagram here what we can see this is the map from the movement 1965 where you can see the large part of punjab is colored in blue colored in blue here means that the water level is just at the height of two, uh, at the depth of 2 to 5 meters while at the same time if you look at the water level of punjab in november 2015 what we can see is that large part of blue area now has been converted into the red areas so what basically it means that the water level is continuously depleting and red area means that the region where water level was found earlier at the depth of 2 to 5 meter now the same water is being found at depth of 10 to 20 meters so in this scenario such kind of improvisation is very much required and especially if you look at currently the november 2020 figures what we can see that 116 out of 138 agricultural blocks of punjab is under dark zone or semi dark zone that means water stress is continuously increasing in these areas and that is where since sri system the cultivation of sri system based rice have a quite strong root system because very young plants are being transplanted thus it also prevents lodging from rain or wind that means if a storm comes or very strong rain fall happens or uh, we have this uh, different kind of uh, thunderstorms and uh, dust storms sand storms it passes through the field in such situation also the damage to the uh, plants will be minimal in nature and as we discussed the small and marginal farmers due to very low uh, um, very uh, low uh, input uh, requirement can increase their income substantially. However, the SRI system is not free from limitations. There are certain limitations as well which you have to address. So, the first limitation is that under SRI system, there is a high possibility of very huge or greater extent of growth of weed. And if it is not checked, it can cause substantial loss of yield. So, whatever gains we are uh, expecting to gain from SRI system, that completely will be lost if the weed is not checked. Second, the system is believed to be sustainable only if organic inputs in the soil structure are maintained. And that is a problem in the agriculture sector of India. Because today, the by habit, the farmers of India in different parts of countries are heavily dependent on using chemical fertilizers. And not only using chemical fertilizers, but they are also using these fertilizers in a kind of skewed ratio. For example, the normal ratio of nitrogen to phosphorus to potash should be 4 is to 2 is to 1. While in some regions of Punjab, it is as high as 20 is to 2 is to 1. Such a skewed ratio of chemical fertilizer uses can upend the advantage which we are expecting from the SRA system. And that is why since India is a land of diversity, this is true in the sector of agriculture also, in the area of the type of soil that is available in different different states also. So instead of using a one size fits all approach, more research is required by the different states, by different state universities, agricultural universities, so they can understand the benefits and the uh, advantages and disadvantages of SRI in different regions of India. And thus depending on that, the government can take acquired and adequate state. So that is all about the SRA system of farming, the advantages, disadvantages and the limitations. Thank you very much.